Hello everybody again and welcome back to the long format top 10. Uh, it is such a, a great pleasure to, to make these videos for you. It, it really has been uh, quite an amazing thing to do uh, and, and just a lot of fun. Anyway, today we're talking about attraction. Attraction is synonymous, of course, with fragrances in, in many different ways. Um, you know, I've been on record multiple times basically saying that, you know, you shouldn't trust any uh, product that is marketed to you as it's going to make you more sexy, it's going to make you more attractive, it's going to make you more this, it's going to make you more that. At the end of the day, um, you know, it's it's down to yourself and of course uh, looks can help and style definitely helps and fragrances can help to a point but if, you know, it's all about connection, it's, it's connecting with the, uh, the other person. I don't want to preach about it, uh, you already sort of know my feelings about it. Um, but I wanted to talk about fragrances that uh, I genuinely feel are, are, are quite attractive, but not in a sort of a sense of, you know, not in an extreme way. You know, we've got to lower our expectations of what attractive means. Um, to me, attractive means uh, that the fragrance itself uh, is attractive and that it smells great universally and that people will definitely uh, enjoy uh, the smell. Um, but if you're being a complete arsehole and you smell great, then it doesn't it doesn't matter, you know. Um, you know, fragrances can smell attractive, but um, you know you have to be attractive in yourself. So, what makes an attractive fragrance? There's lots of different um, mentalities around it. Uh, in French perfumery, it is um, you know floral, usually, um, or sort of minty, uh, aromatic kind of things can be seen as attractive. In Italian perfumery, it's just uh, simply uh, the cleaner the man, the sexier the man. And um, in American perfumery, it's uh, just throw a load of tobacco and alcohol into the fragrance and we're done. And so we're going to start with fragrances that I think are attractive, sort of objectively, you know, in, in a universal way, in a way that uh, anybody can understand, that anybody can appreciate. Um, and then as we go along and as we keep going, we're going to talk about fragrances that are sort of less objectively attractive, but I'm going to explain to you why I think that they're personally attractive. So let's get into it. I think that probably one of the most attractive fragrances that's ever been released uh, onto the market is Lenoir de Lomme by Yves Saint Laurent. I, I feel as though I don't talk about this anywhere near as much as I should, and the reason why it's not because I dislike it, it's more because what is there to say, you know. Um, this has been hyped, this is one of those uh, rare fragrances that's been hyped in every single era of the fragrance community. And that's an amazing feat in itself. In fact, it is probably the most consistently hyped uh, before Jeremy Fragrance, BJF. Um, well, you know, this was still hyped. This was still talked about. You know, this was hyped essentially from day one. It, it hit the ground running. And if you've not smelt it, then you, you definitely should. You know, it's, uh, I'd say, part of the, uh, it's worth the fragrance pilgrimage, if you will. When I bought this a few years ago, I think I literally bought this to just do videos on it. Um, because it was hyped at the time. And it's always hyped. So I thought, I, I should have Lenoir Blom. um in my collection just in case I need to talk about it on a video and but lo and behold it's actually a fragrance that I've used again and again because it's so easy to use I'm actually happy to spray this always uh, I really have been enjoying it recently so straight off the bat you get a lot of cardamom and this was, I don't know if this was exactly the fragrance that revolutionized the, the, the cardamom note, but it's one that totally uh, pulled it back into the mainstream. How I like to think of cardamom is it is kind of like um, Valium. It is Valium to a fragrance or Vicodin to a fragrance in a way where it is, it calms everything down, it levels the playing field, it, um, you know, gives a fragrance, a, a real, any of the notes that are in the fragrance are immediately calmed down and, and subsidized and subdued and completely subdued into the fragrance. And so how this seems to work is you've got some um, 
cocoa. There's actually a little bit of citrus in here as well, which I'd forgotten about. There is like a, a bergamot, almost like lime smell that's working with um, like cocoa powder. And there's kind of like a, a small nutty smell, almost like a pistachio nut. If I'm honest, it, it, there is like, you know, like pistachio ice cream. That, along with some soap, along with some citrus, and just and, and a bit of cocoa and, and vanilla chocolate. But to calm that all down, because all those notes in some ways could be, uh, could be quite vivacious. They could be quite big. They could be quite uh, over the top. And you could get a very different fragrance if you don't have something to just smoothen the entire composition out and that's what cardamom does and so what you get is this very pleasant um, almost almost like a snowscape of these different notes and different accords that is sweet balanced out with citrus and this pistachio flavored ice cream smell now there is i don't think there is pistachio uh, listed in the notes i don't think there is that but that is always how it's really come across to me and it's attractive and simple and straightforward and sometimes that's what you want you see lom the original lom which was kind of like a a take on boss bottled almost was lom because it had the same notes it had apple it had cinnamon it had vanilla um but it was done in this, again, with, with cardamom that, that, that just completely put like a toner over everything. So that was too simple. That was too straightforward to me. I, I didn't actually enjoy that as much. But Lenoui de Lom does the same trick and it works. It completely works. Lenoui de Lom is um, Knight of the Man. And, you know, at one point this was considered to be the ultimate... Um, stylish night out man's fragrance you know you had other like um you know going to the club kind of fragrances like one million and la mal and and all that kind of stuff but this was seen as a a cut above all of that you know it was the stylish night out fragrance it was the stylish um sexy alluring uh, night out fragrance you know back in the day la nuit de l'homme and Durom Intense, they were the two sort of, you know, you're really into fragrance if you own these two designers. You know, they were like, they, they, were, they, they showcased that you were serious about this hobby. It was great. And then moving on to number nine now. This is Stronger With You Intensely by Emporio Armani. You'll notice that I've got Zaharoff strips. It's because um, when he sent me those three fragrances... Uh, I got block cards for it, but I, I don't know if I even should be using these Zaharoff strips on, um, you know, on Emporio Armani. <laughs> Seems, uh, I don't know what you think about that. He doesn't know I'm using them. Um, you know, there's just such a full, um, Compliment scent acumen here. What a great fragrance. What a absolutely fantastic fragrance. Um, there's a few things here. So people always like this fragrance on me. And I've seen so many videos, you know, of other fragrance reviewers talk about just how well this does with people. Um, there are some really big fans of this. There, there are the people who are into niche and, you know, they hate anything that's designer, they, they despise it. And, you know, there's some, for some people, the, the more likable a fragrance, the more they, ha they hate it. So you can imagine this fragrance is, is gonna get some lovers and some haters. So there's almost like, there's, so there's toffee, there's caramel, there's, there's fudge and, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. It doesn't, 
it doesn't smell like that. If it really smelt like that, I actually think it would not work. Because I've smelt fragrances that are just pure chocolate fudge, coffee, toffee, and all that. And it doesn't work. And it never actually is usually that freight, like that kind of composition. Um, you know, every note breakdown that you read is not going to be completely accurate. Um, to me, what there is here is um, there's the fudge, the caramel, the chocolate that's there. But what's what's um, lifting it up is actually like some white florals, maybe even some jasmine. Um, maybe not necessarily patchouli, but there's like jasmine. There's even like some white, like almost gardenia or something. I mean, th th this is blended so well that you don't, you know, you're not going to smell that. But it, it reminds me again, and I think that this is the second Simpsons reference in two videos. What it reminds me of is, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, so it's the episode where uh, Homer has to climb, I think, Mount Springfield or or the the, the mountain. Um, I think it's for some sponsorship or something. I, I don't know. But uh, he's terrible at climbing. He's absolutely terrible at climbing. He's, he's not, not fit at all. So what they do is they get the... Uh, I think it's Duff that's sponsoring this. And Duff, Duff Beer, the fictional beer in The Simpsons. So they, they have him and they have two, two, I think, Sherpas, Serpas with him. And when he falls asleep, they drag him up. And so it looks as though Homer's doing all the work, but um, he's not really. I mean, he's he is doing. He's the visual representation of you know him getting up there, but it, he's not. He's being dragged up by these um, Himalayan <laughs> uh, serpers or sherpas or, or whatever they're called, and um, so they're doing all the work, but they get none of the credit. And I feel as though that is how it works with Emporio Armani Intense and fragrances like this, where there's actually a, quite a floral element in it. Um, and there's a lighter white floral smell, but they never give them the credit because that's not sexy enough and they, and they don't want to tell their men that they fill all their masculine fragrances with, um, with that kind of thing, you know? So, you know, toffee and caramel and stuff like that, that's, that's what's, uh, given, but it's, it's not exactly the, the whole story. This is a very full bodied attractive smell that's very clean um, and, and it's got a lot of cleanliness to it but it also has this really great caramel toffee um, to a degree hazelnut but not really I get the nut that like the nut family's in there but I don't know about hazelnut necessarily you know, I know what hazelnut smells like. I, I love me some Nutella. Um, and this isn't quite it. But there's something there. So, you know, why it's so attractive to me, and I've said this before, is because the two big sort of sides of the coin with fragrances, you know, you've got some real cleanliness. That's what makes somebody attractive. And then you've got sweetness. And, and that can also be very attractive. And, and what they did with Imperial Armani Strong With You Intensely is that they fused those together. And they made this, and it's a very attractive smell. So these next three fragrances, to me, are like total man whore smells. That's what they always have been. Uh, that's what they always will be to me. Th these are like, you know, my interpretation of the sex, if you will. You know, obviously, what's sexy and what's attractive is a subjective thing. Um, you know, no matter how much uh, it's marketed at you that uh, sexuality and attractiveness is, is objective. Um, everybody has different tastes, everybody has different experiences, in, even including in attractiveness and, and all that kind of thing. But to me, these th three fragrances are the, the man whores of uh, my fragrance world. I think that these are the sexiest fragrance, the, the three uh, sexiest fragrances that I've ever smelled in my life. And that's just my personal opinion it might not work with you and, and you really got to understand that and, and that's the the big sort of takeaway I'd, I'd want to sort of ultimately give you which is 
fragrances and attraction are varied and they are like m most things just you know personal but Durom is just you know still probably to this day my my second favorite fragrance of all time you know what number one is come on I hate actually even wasting this spray I will not be doing that again <laughs> this is like the one time that I will be uh I don't even know I sprayed it. I know this fragrance like the back of my hand. Um, you know, I still don't know why Dior did what they did. I know that we've still got Dior on the original. Um, well, I, I do kind of know why they did what they did, you know, because, you know, this is not your typical masculine smell. It It goes against a lot of the rules and I remember the first time that I smelt this um, back when I was 19, I think. And I was like, that's ridiculous. That is utterly ridiculous. Why would anyone to smell like uh, lipstick, uh, foundation, uh, makeup bag thing? And I was immediately transported to one of the high school plays that I did where I was in the changing rooms and, and they were putting foundation on me and everybody was smelling like foundation and, you know, mascara and stuff like that. Uh, back when, like, I was thinking about being an actor or something, but trust me, that's that's not what I want to do. And so I remember that the duel online was, was sacred. It was, it, like, I remember going to Boots for the first time and seeing, and the hype had been so intense about it that I... Like I went to the Dior part and I, and I saw this bottle and I'd never smelt it before. I'd never smelt Dior in my life, and I thought, my God, I, I can't believe this. I, you know, I, I, this is this is actually happening. You know, I've heard about it and now I'm going to smell it. And it was a complete disappointment. <laughs> it was a complete disappointment when I first smelt this. Uh, now I, I could not imagine my life without it. For those who of you who are really just like new to this and, 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 you know, you don't have a lot of kind of fragrance experience under your belt. Um, this is mostly just going to smell preposterous. It's going to smell like, um, your big sister or little sister's, uh, makeup kiss. Um, or it's going to smell just maybe a bit one dimensional, but as you start to get it and you start to understand what's going on and, and you start to appreciate it, this smells like a uh, powdery, uh, creamy, uh, sweet, somewhat musky, uh, floral smell that is incredibly clean, that is incredibly uh, sensitive. I suppose the term back in the day was metrosexual where it's, you know, a man who is so okay with the fact that he's a man that he can wear something a little bit more on the sensitive side, on the feminine side, on the floral side. And it's a very um, isolating smell, isolated smell, as in there's not really a gimmick behind it. it it is essentially the note of iris as we know um just sort of given a spotlight to do its own thing and to be itself with some some sort of trimmings around it like the the, the pie the powdery um element and just a little bit of like vanilla to to just make it all work and it is to me the best interpretation of iris that, that i've ever smelt you know there's been Great iris smells, um, Gelman, Reserve Privé, iris and alcohol, great, sign me up. Um, Blue Noir Parfum by um, Nisosa Rodriguez um, is great, but it's still got like a bit of this citrusy thing that takes away a little bit from iris. But, but Durham is kind of like iris purism. And that's the best way I could describe it. It is pure. It's a pure smell. It is refined. It knows what its intentions are. And it just 
sticks to them and is amazing. And every time I smell it, I smile. I've, I've got a lot of you know, history with this fragrance now. I feel very attached to it um, for multitudes of reasons. But yeah, this is an astonishing smell. And um, it's attractive to me because I think it, uh, I might be pulling stuff out of my arse here, but it's a very trusting smell. Like, I think it's a very trustworthy uh, fragrance. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, like, how can you sort of qualify that? But, you know, it doesn't smell like everything else. It doesn't smell like, you know, it doesn't smell cheap. It doesn't smell um, blue. It doesn't smell too sweet. It, it smells almost innocent in a way. And it's, you know... It smells as though a lot of thought has been put into this selection of fragrance. It smells as though, you know, it's someone who, who really is particular about what they wear and how they want to, you know, showcase themselves to the world. And I think that that in itself is very attractive. It's a great, great fragrance. Amazing. One of the, one of the finest. So then we have these two. And, you know, these two, I think... Um, they definitely share common ground. This is Feb Delicious by Dior again. And this is Kisses Rain. It's the new one. It, it says uh, La Blaise. I don't know. I don't actually know. But this is the new Kisses Rain. A very, very similar to the last one. But there are some differences. But these two are definitely in the same family. But it's almost like they're cousins. So Fev is polite, um, amenable, uh, fun. Uh, definitely would uh, take you on a date. Yeah, probably like three dates in, then it would probably kiss you and, you know, try and take you to the bedroom. Uh Kisses Rain is uh, Kisses Rain is like I'm taking you to dinner, but you're paying, and then we're just gonna go home, and that's it, and you might never see me again. That's the sort of, uh, but they're in the same. Yeah, Kisses Rain is a lot more of a scallywag. It's a lot more of a scallywag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that like in the pirate sense, I guess. Like Kisses Rain to me is 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 um Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow. That's what Kisses Rain is to me. It always kind of has been. That's the character that it's been. Um You know, sleeps with a load of women, forgets who he's slept with, you know, that scene in Pirates of the Caribbean where he gets slapped and he's like, I don't know if I deserve that. I probably did deserve that. Because it's just, you know, Whatever, but you know, and that's fun. And uh, I, um, when I was playing uh, Assassin's Creed Black F Black Flag, you know, it, it made me think of uh, Feb Delicious, even though that probably should have uh, reminded me a little bit more of Virgin Island Water by Creed. But you know, that kind of rogue character, Han Solo from Star Wars, also comes up. Um, unpredictable, but there's something really attractive about that because you, you, you don't know what you're going to get, um, but you know that it's going to be fun and you know that it's going to be exciting and you know that, you know, you're just going to be enthralled. And whereas Fev is more, a little bit more predictable uh, as, a, as a character, I guess, I guess Fev is more... Not exactly James Bond, no, I, I wouldn't say James Bond. James Bond's uh, more a, a fragrance that's coming up later, but Fev is more pleasant. For, you could take your, you know, you could take Fev home to your mum and dad and, you know, say hello. But Kisses Rain is, um, you can't take Kisses Rain home to your mum and dad because Kisses Rain has just left the country and you, you're probably never going to see him again. So you've got these uh, two extremes. So... Fev is uh, a tonka bean, a praline, vanilla, um, 
really quite sweet, but also almost like unsweetened or licorice smell. Not too, not too high. It doesn't smell like licorice in the sense of like it, you know, it's, you're gonna get like Bassett's all sorts or, or whatever like that. But there's like this um, tangy licorice tone that is just giving everything a backbone, including the the tonka bean, the vanilla, and um, the powdery elements as well. It's an amazing fragrance. Again, a full fragrance, a full bodied experience, similar to. Uh, strong with you intensely. I actually had somebody um, I was talking to in a consultation the other day. He said that like this was one of his favorites of all time, and I said you got to well, look. You got and he was he was talking about like you know those kind of full bodied uh, but yet balanced sweet fragrances. And I said you got to try Fev. And he did get back to me. He is trying Fev. He's, he's ordered a sample, so uh, I'm nervous to see how that goes. But I didn't recommend Kisses Rain as much because. Kisses Rain is, it doesn't have that full-bodied sweetness that Fev has. It goes off on its own tangent and is more uh, floral, uh, woodier, and more, especially this rendition, there's, there's more amber. There's more of a sort of a an abrasive uh, amber to it than Fev. Fev sticks to its guns with its sweetness. With its sweetness. Fev opens with sweetness, but then it decides to go a more abrasive uh, kind of direction. But both very attractive and, and sexy fragrances, both really interesting, uh, and both, you know, two of my all-time favorites. But if we want to go over and above that, you know, with the, with the sweetness, um, and then we introduce some fruits and things like that into it, because those have been like chocolate, vanilla-centric, but if we want to get our five a day and we want to introduce pear into the mix, we've got to talk about uh, La Malle Parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I will openly admit that I, I did not like this fragrance when I first smelt it. People freak the fuck out about that, by the way. People absolutely freak out. They're like, you didn't like La Malle Parfum and now you, 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 you think it's great. Can we ever trust you? Look, I made one mistake. I changed one opinion about one fragrance in my nearly 10 years of doing this. I am allowed to be human once in a while. This is great, um, but I can still see why I don't, I don't like it. You know, what's interesting, comparing this smell to what we've just smelt there, this now smells like focaccia bread compared to the sweetness. This is a very, very loud and intense fragrance. Uh, very spicy, you've got that great pear, and you've got like pepper. I'm, I'm not even joking, this smells like focaccia bread. <laughs> With like olives and, you know like the, the, the sort of the dark black olives? It doesn't smell like this at all, by the way. It's only because I'm doing it on the garden because I've, you know, compared it to all the sweet fragrances that I've just smelled. But it's interesting. But this is still a incredibly spicy scent. Uh, you've got the vanilla, you've got the earthy tones. Uh, you can totally tell, because this is similar to Elixir, but Elixir's got more of the lavender. I prefer Elixir uh, much more, but I still have got time for this fragrance. I've still got time for it. Super spicy, very sexy. It, it's attractive because it's uh, both spicy and uh, earthy and quite unique and has got that uh, sweetness but yeah I just forgot how like spicy and almost savoury this is you know I remember thinking that this was an ultra sweet bomb when I first smelt it but comparing it to the sweet vanilla fragrances I've just smelt this isn't actually anywhere near as sweet as I remember it being it's got such a great tone Bit synthetic, but it's got this great um, yeah. but it's got a fantastic tonal 
uh, continuous tone, similar to like the the spiciness of like um, cola. It's not, yeah, like, actually that's an interesting thing. Like it's not like, you know, Enigma, like Roger Dev's Enigma, but it's got this dark sort of intense, I don't, you know when you'd get like a fresh Coke, like in a bottle and you get the the vanilla and everything like that, but there's that undercurrent, like spicy, almost sweet peppery kind of smell. Not not bell pepper, I'm talking like black peppercorn. I don't know, I might just be <laughs> talking out my ass here, but there's like that kind of spicy element of Coca-Cola when you when you get it fresh and it's cold. There's that in here. I'm not talking about the vanilla, I'm not talking about the excess sweetness, I'm talking about the spiciness that's in Coca-Cola, that's in here. Along with fruit, along with pear, yeah, it is quite something, quite intriguing. And yeah, it just makes me want to go out, you know, it just makes me want to go out on the town. That's the thing about this fragrance now, like, you know, I've been out in Edinburgh with this fragrance quite a few times now, and yeah, this is the let's go out, let, let, you know, let's have a date night, let's, let's go out and maybe not hit the club, but maybe hit like a restaurant, um, go to the cinema, go to a comedy club. It's a very active fragrance. It's a very out and about type fragrance. And, and that's great. It's really, really great and very attractive. Now we're going to go into the sort of the more underrated, uh, attractive fragrances in my mind. Um, you know, one of the most underappreciated, uh, fragrances, I think, in the history of this community is, is by Aqua de Palmer, it's called Fico di Amalfi, part of their uh, famous uh, Blue Mediterranean line. One of the greatest, uh, like holiday, I guess, fragrances of all time. It's a good way of putting it. So, you know, fig, the note of fig in the past few years has really come into its own and, um, like yesterday's haze, I, I think uh, by imaginary authors is just as good, if not better, than this. Actually, um, yesterday's haze is uh, very similar to this, but but thicker, uh, richer. But this is, you know, still one of the most incredible. I could have palmer. So this has got orange, kind of like a blood orange, like a tangy blood orange, mixed with fig, and. It's delicious, it, it puts smiles on your face. Um, it's sunny, you know. It also has just this smell that, you know, I recognize when I first smelt this fragrance, I went, oh yeah, it's that smell. I know that smell, you know. I, I, I've been to many Italian hotels. Uh, I've been to hotels in Greece and, and they all have this smell. They all have this, I don't know if it's a, a cleaning product or something like a, an essential oil combination but you will have smelt it you know if you've lived in Europe and especially mainland Europe this fragrance will not come as a surprise to you or maybe even in Florida you know or, or some of the hotter states in the in in the United States or just places where it's hot and fruit is plentiful you will probably recognize this you will know what this smell is but this is the ultimate sort of holiday fragrance to me and I think that it's very attractive for a man or a woman especially if it is in a hot climate in a warmer climate um, and especially if you're going on holiday you know if you're looking to have a cheeky holiday romance you know I, I'd highly recommend if you go to Amalfi it's a lot more uh, informal and a lot more um, I guess sociable than some of the Aqua de Palma colonias. You know, the colonias are very, uh, you know, what you wear a suit and, you know, it's all very, you know, upper class and I'm going to a business meeting or, or, or whatever, that kind of thing. But the Blue Mediterranean line in general doesn't have that vibe. It has more of a, a looser vibe, a, a sociable we're on holiday vibe you know um and all of de cecilia a, a vanilla fragrance which is was crazy you know for aqua de palma when they did that you know they usually wouldn't touch 
vanilla with a barge pole, but they did that. Um, Arancia de Capri, great, you know, the whole Blue Mediterranean line is a great line. And Manila de Sicilia is definitely something that I, I really love and I, I want to get that back. I, I used that up um, quite a number of years ago. But this one to me is the best. This to me is when you say Blue Mediterraneo, it's this. In fact, I thought at one point that this was the only line. And that this was the only fragrance from the Blue Mediterraneo line. And I was almost a little bit disappointed when I found out that there were more because I thought, guys, you've done it. There's no need to do like. Take the W, drop the mic. You did it with this. You did it with Fico de Amalfi. There's no need to do Mondolio de Sicilia. There's no reason to do, you know, Costa Zora or, um, you know, Arancia de Capri or, or any, any of those. You've done it. You know, you've made your point with Fico de Amalfi. And, uh, yeah, probably in my opinion... Still probably my favorite Aqua de Palma, actually, of all time. Hey, I love, um, you know, some of the Colonias, as you know. I like Ascenza. have a soft spot for, for tu Futura. And there's the, the licorice one that I really like that I haven't smelled in ages. I've, I've forgotten it. But um, where is that, actually? I should, I should seek that out. But yeah, Fico de Amalfi is still probably my all-time favorite Aqua de Palma. So, you know, I talked about James Bond earlier, and I think that this is definitely a contender for James Bond, Ombre Leather Parfum. You know, I rank this higher in attractiveness than Ombre Leather because this is more um, easier to wear. Ombre Leather is quite the statement piece, but this is lighter. I've got to say on the card, that just smells like petrol. Like seriously, you know, when you pull up to a a gas station and you wind the windows down and you just smell all that gas that petroleum yeah that, that really is actually a little bit abrasive like you're in the car and you've got petrol but it is on the skin uh, warmed and more uh, suitable but yeah you know ombre leather Tuscan leather all, all those are great but this has got some breathability. This has got some room to be able to maneuver more so than ombre leather, and especially more so than Tuscan leather. Although I think Tuscan leathers, you know, I feel as though I, I, once I'm, I'm done with this and ombre leather, I'm probably going to move on to Tuscan leather once I've, you know, gone through this and ombre leather original. Very attractive because of the, 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 the pure, unapologetic masculinity. You know, uh, the saffron is, I think, a lot more pronounced in this version. In fact, in some ways, with this one especially, they might as well have called it ombre saffron. It's not as catchy as ombre leather, admittedly. But the point still stands. You know, leather and saffron are similar, but there is so much more of a spiky... Um, woody petrol like saffron in this far more on the leathers just hiding in the background this is so much more uh, spikier and white kind of prickly icy icicles of saffron they're just hitting me with this and they always do with this one it's a lot more powdery um, in, uh, in the dry down, but on that opening, it's, it's really intense. A really great masculine fragrance, a very attractive masculine fragrance. Um, something that is definitely worth uh, your time if you're looking to smell more confident and smell more attractive. Finally, we get to a Zaharoff that I can spray on the Zaharoff cards. So, you know, I spoke about this in one of my last videos, but that is just damn good, isn't it? Probably my favorite um, of the Zaharoffs. You know, to sort of clear the decks, you know, with Judge Zaharoff paid for this video and, and everything like that. I think that um, my, my true feelings 
my honest feelings about the whole Zaharoff range go something like this. Um, I think that they are extraordinarily uh, regal and they are extremely sophisticated fragrances on a technical level and on a, a scent level. They always seem to capture both the an older aesthetic of something like from the 80s especially whilst recreating or, or rather contributing to the sort of the current zeitgeist of fragrances and the big thing with Zaharoff signature even even fragrance Jesus Ashton said this he said it's like it's old but it's new and and that's been consistent with all of the the Zaharoffs but it can get repetitive it can and it can get a bit like all right yeah I get it yeah I get it and like signature royal noir i was like yeah you know cool and i think that signature rose is, is really great you know it's one of the only roses that i actually like but you felt as though you know there's a definitive style there's there's a certain way that he and claude uh, do their work and create something but i got a sample of this I think when George came to watch uh, the From Here to There premiere and he gave me a sample of this and he said what do you think and at first I was just like okay so what like it's tobacco vanille but then I wore it and I went oh right I get it it's definitely that genre but again it's the old new uh, style and then when I went to Estonia and I, I think that this really cemented it I went to Estonia with uh, my girlfriend and some of the family and, and I wore it there and that was it that that was that was completely it if you've never been to Tallinn Estonia I would highly recommend that you would go especially at Christmas time the Christmas markets are just second to none they're stunning they're beautiful you can also a nip on a, a ferry to Helsinki which is the capital of Finland and you can see their Christmas markets and it it's Christmas tastic and it's all all old and medieval and beautiful there's in fact I'll tell you something actually there's a in Estonia there is a in Tallinn there are these two pubs and one of the pubs is is by the great sort of big like church it's like a town hall tower thing there's like a little pub and if you go in, there are these barmaids. There's there's no artificial light. Everything is candles. And these women will treat you like shit. They will treat you like dirt. They will insult you. They will insult your intelligence. They will just be mean to you whilst they serve drinks to you. And it is absolutely amazing and hilarious because it's part of um, it's part of the gimmick, right? As soon as you enter into that pub, you're no longer in 2020. 2024 2025 or whenever you're watching this it's gone you're in the medieval time and you're a slum of the medieval times and it's hilarious and i think that where it, whenever i smell this I, I remember that and having great actually some of the best mulled wine i'd ever had in that little pub or, or, or tavern or, or bar and that really captured what this was to me um that is the thing that continuously goes through my mind when I when I smell this being in that in that amazing pub. So this is a I think that in some ways you could argue that it's a smoother rendition of tobacco and vanilla more so than tobacco vanille. Tobacco vanille is amazing and like one of the greats of all time, but it's a lot more um, fudgier the, the the texture is cushioned you know it, it's a very uh, black um, dark cushion sort of bl blanket thought of tobacco and vanilla but this sort of is more like a a tightrope you're, you're, you're walking on a tightrope um, between the tobacco and vanilla and, it, and it, like there's razor fine margins with this it's a lot sleeker it's like a you could almost argue it's like tobacco vanille sport 
even though it has no citrus or anything like that, but it's like a sportier, um, niftier, quicker version of tobacco vanilla. It's almost as if, and I don't know how George is going to feel about this, but it's like if tobacco vanilla is Windows <laughs> and Tabac by Zaharoff is Mac, right? It's sleeker, it's slimmer, it's faster, it's, it's a little bit more contemporary, it's more set in sort of the present and the future and it's innovating. Um, but ironically, tobacco, I think, is actually cheaper than tobacco money. But that's the vibe that I get. There's also like a spicier, almost like, don't let this put you off, but like like a Vicks Vapor Rub thing in the background going on. It's fantastic. But when the first time I went to Estonia, I, I wore tobacco vanilla, and then the second time I wore tobacco, and I actually enjoyed myself more the second time I went to Estonia. So... I don't know, maybe there's something going on there. Leather tobacco, on the other hand, to me was like, I wouldn't say pointless, but I was not a fan. I, I didn't like leather tobacco. I've warmed to it a little bit more, but it's kind of like, to me, tobacco, there was so much effort put into making tobacco as balanced as possible. And then leather tobacco is sort of destroying that balance and kind of going a bit over the top with the leather and it just takes away what I think tobacco has already achieved. Like you've already done it. There's no need to, like sometimes less is more and leather tobacco is more, way more than I, I feel as though it needs to be. There's great memories attached. Like to me, leather, sorry, great memories here. To me, tobacco seriously is just you walking down the old streets of, uh, town on Estonia, there's snow everywhere, and you go into that pub, you know, after you've had some gloggy at the Christmas markets, and you go into the pub, and you get roasted by the barmaids, and then you have a little mulled wine. Perfect. And finally, I think that this is one of the most misunderstood fragrances of all time, and I do think that it's attractive. I also think that tobacco is... Uh, Incredibly attractive for, for many different reasons. But A City on Fire by Imaginary Authors, I think, is truly one of the most underrated, underappreciated, misunderstood, sexy, attractive fragrances of all time. Because I think that it gets a bad rap and I think it gets a misunderstood rap. So people think that with A City on, a city on Fire that you just get matchsticks. You just get matchsticks and wood and fire and that's your lot in life. But to me, there's just so much more to this. That opening is, is tough. It's like a stout beer, actually. It's like a Guinness or, no, Guinness is a bit basic. Um, you know, like a chocolate oatmeal stout when you first get this with the fire and the wood and it's delicious. But as this dries down, so the other day I was wearing tobacco and eating, and then I went into the bath um, you know, late night, go into the bath, put some incense on. I think it was like a, I don't know what incense it was, but it was like a musk, dark musk uh, incense. And, I, you know, when you go into the shower, you go into the bath and the, water, the hot water touches your skin, it sort of evaporates the fragrance and suddenly you become a, a projecting beast. And that tobacco, that, that sort of um, hypothecary, <laughs> uh, steamed tobacco vanilla mixed in with the incense reminded me of the city on fire and i was like that's beautiful you see as we go down that th there's way more to it right there's dark berries in here there's cardamom in here like lunuit lom and what this turns into is like this beautiful musky balanced like it's berries it's true it's like like darker berries and incense musky incense and it's so warming and so sexy and so you know there's like a little bit of blackberry jam in here there's a little bit of the smoke and the, the burnt match thing but that's more like an incensey beautiful incensey smell and on the skin this is truly magnificent and i think truly like super attractive and especially if it's warmer, that there's this sexy sweetness to it that's just, it transforms the entire 
idea of what a city on fire can be. The opening's rough. It's a black, smoky, dark, chocolatey oatmeal stout. Or like Guinness. But you give this time. And it is one of the most unique, one of the most profound, one of the most underappreciated, sexy, attractive fragrances I think I've ever smelled in my life. And I will, I will argue that to the moon. I'll truly argue that. I think it's an amazing smell. And I don't think it should just be, you know, showcased as, oh, well, it's just that weird s smell that smells like matches. I, you know, Josh Meyer isn't really like that, you know. Josh Meyer doesn't, you know, he, he's not one of the wilder, um, crazier, independent fragrance artists. As in, he knows when to stop. He knows when to just call it quits and say, right, this is getting too crazy. And, and his fragrances are always airing on being a bit crazy, but they're never so crazy that it's, that, that, that it's unwearable. They're all very innovative and they're all unique and they're all independent from the, the trends and the, the current designer trends that are going on, but they're never too crazy for me. They're never too over the top. They're, no, they're never like to the point where they're insulting and I'm like, well, I can't wear that. Nobody can wear that. And I think that's why he's one of the more uh, successful independent uh, houses and truly independent houses. So not like a niche house like Credo Amouage or whatever. Like this guy's so independent, like even with the bottles, you know, they're still sort of straightforward, basic bottles. I think that at this point he could have probably updated them, but I think he's just kind of chosen to keep with the indie aesthetic. And I think that that's a good, a good choice, um, really. But a city on fire to me is, is one of the most un misunderstood underappreciated fragrances I think I've ever seen. I think it can be sexy. I think that under the right circumstances, like I would love to do a battle with A City on Fire versus like Savage or versus Aventus and and genuinely see which one wins. Because I think that that'd be a surprise. You know? Yeah, I really do. I, I think it's a I think it appreciate. I think it deserves way more respect than it than it gets. So those were my ten fragrances, ten attractive fragrances to me. Of course, they were my personal choices. Um, hope that you enjoyed this uh, this long form video again. This sort of podcast style long form video. Uh, you seem to really be enjoying them, which is fantastic, uh, and it, it, it's it's really really great. Uh, anyway, thank you again for watching. And I will see you again soon. Thanks very much on the Fragrance Press. Bye.